Hello, friends and neighbors. Today, we're going to talk about divine instruction concerning forgiveness. Welcome to A Word for Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us. Each Wednesday, you will find Boggs Family Ministries is here with our host, Davy Boggs. Having you along with us is a wonderful addition. Now, let's enjoy together A Word for Wednesday. Thank you, Brother Devin, and thank you for joining us today on A Word for Wednesday. So great to have you with us on this beautiful, sunshiny day. Hope the sun is shining where you are. Hey, I got a scripture for you today. Matthew 6, immediately following what we refer to as the Lord's Prayer. Listen to what Jesus said. He's just told him, you should pray Forgive me, Lord, as I forgive others. And so he expounds on that a little bit. For if we forgive men, if we forgive men their trespasses, what they do to us, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. If ye do it, then your Father will do it. Verse 15, Matthew 6, verse 15. But... If ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The compassion that I have to others directly affects the amount of compassion that God has to me. That is divine instruction concerning forgiveness. Lord, help me to have a forgiving spirit. One of the greatest real life illustrations I have ever read or heard concerning forgiveness came to me when I was just a teenager through a book by Miss Corrie Ten Boom called The Hiding Place. In that book and another book that she wrote, and maybe more than two of her books, she describes forgiveness so effectively. I've never forgotten it. I've, I've probably wanted to forget it a few times. I've probably wanted to overlook it a few times, but it is so profound and it is so Matthew 6, 14 and 15. If you forgive, God said, I will forgive. If you do not forgive, I will not forgive. Miss Corey came head on with that in 1947. I'm going to read for you her description of this as best I can. Stay with me to the end. She says something so profound at the end. Now, Corey, if you remember... You may not be familiar with Corey, but read The Hiding Place. Amazing. True story. Her family lived in the Netherlands. When the the Nazis invaded, they began to remove the Jews and, and other undesirables, as they called them. And Corey's family, really through no pre planning, but Corey's family fell in step by step to to what they felt like God it desired for them to do, and that was to save all the Jewish people that they could, to hide them in their home, help them on their way, to try to get to a safe country where they would not be pulled away into the concentration camps. And they didn't even know what was facing them. We know now, but they didn't know it then, but they were saving lives and they were turned in. And even though the Jewish people that they were hiding, God's people, were they escaped. Corey and her family did not escape. They were taken away. I think her brother lived through it. He was returned home. Their dad died pretty quickly. Corey and her sister Betsy were taken to Ravensbrück concentration camp and faced a couple of years of absolute horror in that place. And Betsy died there. Two years after the end of the war and they've been released, she's been released, Corey's been released. She's speaking in a church in Munich, Germany, 1947. She said, that's where I saw him. A balding, heavy set man 
in a gray overcoat, a brown felt hat clutched between his hands. One moment I saw the overcoat and the brown hat. The next moment I saw a blue uniform and a visored cap with its skull and crossbones emblem. Memories of the concentration camp came back with a rush. The huge room with its harsh overhead lights, the pathetic pile of dresses and shoes in the center of the floor, the shame of walking naked past this man. I could see my sister's frail form ahead of me, ribs sharp beneath the parchment of skin. Betsy and I had been arrested for concealing Jews in our home during the Nazi occupation of Holland. This man had been a guard. This man had been a guard at Ravensbrück, the concentration camp where we were sent. Now, he was in front of me, hand thrust out to shake my hand. A fine message, Fraulein, he said. How good it is to know that, as you say, our sins are at the bottom of the sea. It was the first time since my release from captivity that I had been face to face with one of my captors and my blood seemed to freeze. You mentioned Ravensbrook in your talk, he was saying. I was a guard there. But since that time, he went on, I have become a Christian. I know that God has forgiven me for the cruel things I did there, but I would like to hear it from your lips as well, for all I know. Now, there's no indication here that Corey perceived this man was anything but genuine in his repentance. And again, he stuck his hand out and he asked her, will you forgive me? And as I stood there, Corey said, I could not forgive him. Betsy had died in that place. Could he erase her slow, terrible death simply by asking? It could not have been many seconds that he stood there and held his hand out waiting for my reaction. But to me, it seemed like hours as I wrestled with the most difficult thing I had ever had to do. I had to do it. I knew that. I had to forgive for he had forgiven me. The message that God forgives has a prior condition that we forgive those who have injured us. If you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father in heaven forgive your trespasses. I knew that, she said. Still, I stood there with the coldness clutching my heart. But at its root, forgiveness is an act of the will. And the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Jesus, help me. I prayed silently. I can lift my hand. I can do that much. You supply the feeling. And so woodenly and mechanically, I thrust my hand into the one that was outstretched to me. And as I did, an incredible thing took place. The current started in my shoulder, raced down my arm, sprang into our joined hands. And then this healing warmth seemed to flood my whole being, bringing tears to my eyes. I forgive you, brother, I cried with all my heart. For a long moment, we grasp each other's hands, the former guard and the former prisoner. I had never known God's love so intensely as I did then. I remember being so moved by that when I was just a teenager reading The Hiding Place. And years later, when I went back to read The Hiding Place and, and, and Corey's other works, and I remember that, that proclamation, former guard, former prisoner, 
grasping each other's hands. And I had never known God's love as intensely, so intensely as I did then. Can I couple that passage and this story with another verse that seemingly has nothing to do with forgiveness? Paul said that Jesus taught it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And I have mentioned that here. I have mentioned very specifically what a blessing it is to be on the receiving end of a gift because we think of that as monetarily or materially. And it is a blessing to receive, but it is much a much greater blessing to be on the giving end. I've said specifically here before, I remember the first time someone handed me a $100 bill. I remember the absolute amazement. Wow, someone is parting with their hard-earned money and putting it, putting it in my hand. A hundred dollars. Wow. I remember the amazement. I remember the joy. I remember the happiness. I, re I remember the thankfulness. But I'm going to tell you, I declare it's a thousand times more blessed to be the one giving that $100 bill. Try it sometimes if you've never done it. Don't wait till you can afford it. Don't, don't wait till then. Do it as soon as you get a $100 bill. Put it in the hands of somebody in the grocery line. Put it in the hands of somebody at the laundromat. Put it in the hands of a waitress that is down and, and looking for a looking for somebody to help. Put a hundred dollar bill in some in some stranger's hand. Just walk up to them and without any without any condon just descending, without any pride, with just say, look, this is from me and God. Bless you. Put it in an envelope with you if you want to. Whatever. Just give it to somebody. You're going to find out it's more fun, more joyous and even causes more gratitude to give a hundred than it does to receive a hundred. So it's more blessed to give than to receive. Let's look at that in the, in the light of what Corey said here and the scripture. Thank God we have received forgiveness. Oh, I'd be on my way to hell or in hell if I had not been forgiven. Thank God I'm clean, free from sin, free from the penalty of sin, free from the power of sin. Hallelujah, I've been forgiven. What a blessing. But I promise you, it's a greater blessing, at least an equal blessing, and probably a greater blessing to be the one extending forgiveness. Someone who needs to be forgiven, and you graciously say, forget it. It's over. I forgive. I do not hold it against you. Go in peace. I forgive. Corey was a wonderful Christian. She sets Betsy up, her sister, to be a much more spiritual woman, but Corey learned her lessons well from Betsy and from her parents and from Christ. She was a, she was a good Christian. She had been forgiven. But in 1947, less than two years after escaping the most horrendous episode in her life, a couple of years in a concentration camp, watching thousands die, including her sister, suffering horribly. Less than two years after that, she's face to face with, with one of her captors, one of the prison guards. Will you forgive me, Fraulein? And as an act of will, she stuck out her hand and said, yes. And the feeling came then. I have never known God's love so intensely. I felt God's love more intensely when I gave it to someone else than I did when I received it the first time for myself. The divine instruction to forgiveness is to give it and then you will receive it.
Mm. That's my word for Wednesday. I hope it's encouraging. Thank you for coming and joining us. God bless you, dear friend. See you next week. Ciao for now. That is our word for Wednesday. We are so glad that you've spent a few minutes with us today. If you've been touched by today's episode, please share it with your friends and family. We welcome your questions or comments below or by email. You can find the email address in the description, along with a link to Mile Markers, the website for Boggs Family Ministries. Also, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you again, and we hope to see you next Wednesday.